Hi everyone, I hope all is well with you. So y'all know I'm here to give y'all some royal empowerment. And today's message is to not throw your pearls to swine. Don't throw your pearls to swine. This, when I say royal empowerment, I believe this message here, it, it really, really ties into to not throwing your pearls to swine. Um, before I get into this message, I just want to say, be on the lookout um, for a flyer or something that I'm going to post on my personal Facebook page and my public Facebook page. And this flyer is going to be a prayer challenge so that all of us can be active in changing lives of others through prayer as Christians. Okay. Again, in one of my previous messages, when I was talking about how a lot of people were condemning certain things that were happening, and I'm not against people standing up for what is right, but at the same time, let's not always just call things out, you know, by itself, pray about these things. And so that's, what's important. That is our superpower as people in the kingdom of God, we have the power of prayer. So again, be on the lookout for a flyer that's going to go out where I'm encouraging um, churches, people, Christians, ministries to pray together concerning certain things so that we can see a better change in um, the stuff that's going on. And you never know um, who you might see get converted. You never know what celebrity you might see get converted in this process. Okay. So again, going back to this message, don't throw your pearls to swine. Y'all, let me show you what that looks like. Okay. Throwing your pearls to swine is like you're giving the best of what you have or the best of who you are to someone who is just completely um oblivious to it someone that just completely is not feeling you completely not going to respect how you feel or respect who you are or value what you have to them throwing your pearls to swine that's just like me giving a dog a diamond ring you know you're giving something valuable. Giving your pearls to swine I mean you're giving it some. You're giving something that's undeserving of your valuables, and that's what throwing your pearls to swine is. A lot of times we can do this when we feed our energy to people that don't appreciate it. And again, it could be in any relationship. Okay, it could be a work relationship. It can be. A romantic relationship. It could be um, a family relationship, friendships, whatever it is that you're giving to someone and it's not coming back to you. That is an uneven or one sided relationship. And most likely you could be throwing your pearls to swine. And again, a person that does not appreciate who you are and your value, they're going to drain you. That's just, that's just something that's going to happen. A person that doesn't really appreciate who you are, they're going to most likely drain you. Another way that you can throw your pearls to swine is when you're trying to talk about something serious and that's near and dear to you. And the other person, they're withstanding you. They're giving you a hard time, particularly when we talk about the word of God when you're trying to teach people and then you have some people, they're not into God, but they want to give you a hard time, then that's another way you can actually throw your pearls to swine. In other words, give something that is holy to the dogs. All right. And that's another part of that, um, of what I'm talking about. And all of that aligns with each other because it comes from Matthew 7 and 6. Okay, you don't give the dogs what is holy and you don't throw your pearls to swine. That's what we are we are encouraged not to do. So throwing your pearls to swine, you could be giving somebody your peace of mind. You can be uh, robbed of your energy. 
And we got to learn how to preserve ourselves from people that we already, especially if you ever come across a person and you just looking like, oh my goodness, I don't want to talk to him today, or I don't want to talk to her today, this person, yeah, sometimes you might have to disappoint some folks just to preserve you. You want to have a good day. You wake up wanting to have a good day, and this person here, they stuck on something that doesn't happen um, a long time ago, and they want to sing that song every day and want to make you listen to it and then get mad when you don't want to hear it, okay? But sometimes you got to do what it takes to preserve you. Hey, to everyone that is on here, hello, 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 President Conyers. So when it comes to preserving you and not throwing your pearls to swine, we got to learn not to feel guilty about that. Tradition always teaches us how to do some of the stuff that will not help us. But, you know, just taking the time to get to know yourself, looking at your life, looking at what you need to change and fix you start to realize, hey, we got to go to go against the grains of some things. Some stuff I can't deal with. Like for, for me, verbal and emotional abuse to some degree, that was something I want to say I was sort of trained to deal with because it was people don't know they're doing it. And when it's not being done to them, then they can tell you, okay, they can tell you, okay, well, I don't see what, what I did to you was so bad. I don't, I don't see what, I, what I've done to you, how that could have hurt you or how that could have harmed you. But a lot of times when it's easy for a person to dish those things out or to become used to doing certain things to you that they don't realize that they're hurting you. So I say all this because those same people could have conditioned you to receive things from other people that mistreat you, all right? In other words, if in your upbringing you was put down a lot, you was um, mistreated a lot, disrespected, disregarded, or whatever, certain habits you're going to carry into other relationships, and there's certain things you're going to accept because you've already accepted them before, and it's a part of you that just think that this is something I got to deal with. But I want to let you know, you, no, you don't. You don't have to keep throwing your pearls to, sw to swine. You don't have to keep on biting your tongue while somebody's stepping on your toes. You don't have to do that. Okay? And this is all about being royally empowered. We got to use this wisdom that God has put in his word. And we got to put it to practice in our life. When you start to do that, it might feel scary. But at the same time, it's going to be liberating once you get past that hurdle. Once you have to pull back on something, well, on somebody, really. On somebody who who is just taking you for granted, okay? I want y'all to look at yourselves to be diamonds, okay? To be pearls, to be valuable, okay? According to Isaiah 62 and 3, you shall be a royal di diadem in the hand of God. That means you should be a crown in God's hand. So you are valuable. Okay. That's why. And let's just say if you a crown that got some pearls in it. Why would you give your valuables to a, to a pig? Okay. Why would you give anything that belonged to you to some swine? Okay. And so some people feel like as Christians, you got to answer them. But they don't know the word of God. Okay. Because according to Proverbs 26 and 4, answer not a fool so you won't be like them. Now, that was paraphrase, but that's where that scripture, that's where that paraphrase come from. Okay, that's what I paraphrase, but read Proverbs 26 and 4 because it lets you know that when you engage in an argument with somebody that's determined not to understand you, not to learn just to give you a hard time, you're going to end up stressing yourself out. And you might end up doing something foolish because they done dragged you into a web of negativity. Okay. So when a person is being foolish and they're trying to um, get you to, to waste your time giving your valuables, you're trying to give them knowledge and they're just like, they're not feeling it. You need to stop right there. Okay. Now, when I used to read this verse and the next one to it in, in Proverbs 26 and 5, I used to be 
a little confused about it. But then what I started doing is looking at different translations, looking at different commentary so that I can be enlightened about it. So the next part was um, saying, okay, answer a fool and so that that person won't think that they're right. And at first I'm like, you know, just, you know, during the part where I'm growing and, and reading, and I'm trying to learn, I didn't understand it then, but now I understand it better. Okay, so what that simply means is that you can correct that fool so they won't go around thinking that they're in the right. And look, when you do it, don't try to drill it in anybody's head. Just say it one time. Just say it one time. One time I used to think that I had to make somebody believe this, make somebody, make somebody, and I think that's where we get it wrong. Our job as Christians is not to force anybody. It's to compel and to influence and if we have to force or um, make somebody believe what we believe, then we're going to end up really stressing ourselves out. Okay, in Revelations um, 22 and 11, Revelations 22 and 11 tells you, let the unjust still be unjust and let the filthy still be filthy. Okay, that's what the word says in Re Revelation 22 and 11. That's what the word tells us. What does that mean? People that choose to not want to learn, people that choose to be stubborn, people that choose to, to want to just live in sin or however it is or not receive the truth, you let them make their decision. And if that leaves them unjust and filthy, that's all on them because once they reject the truth, that's on them. So my whole thing is, um, in alignment with that, when it comes to the things of God, don't try to get all spiritual and um, deep with somebody that has a mind of a baby when it comes to spiritual things. That's another thing that I had to learn. Okay, you can't you can't really have these types of conversations with just anybody. And some level of Christians, you know, if you have a baby Christian, they may not be able to receive everything. You know how I know? Because I used to be like that. Okay. Certain things people would say uh, when I was starting on early in my journey and I just didn't understand. Now, and I was the type of person that would just listen. I wasn't always the type that would try to um, uh, be foolish because I knew I didn't know a whole lot. I felt like I did when I started learning more about Christ, but I realized, you know, you're still learning. So I say all this so that when it comes to preserving ourselves as Christians, as people in the body of Christ, we're not hurting ourselves trying to save someone that wants to jump in the fire. Okay. Now, and this also goes into your daily living too. You know, not just necessarily things that's um, spiritual, just interacting with people, period, when it comes to self-respect. And that's something that I'm big on in my ministry, y'all. That's something I'm big on. And to help it make sense for y'all, somebody helped me realize something years ago when I was starting off early in my Christian journey. They helped me to realize that the thing that you're passionate about the most came from a place of pain. Or something that you were dealing with. And so when it comes to self-respect, I, I, I cannot stand to see um, somebody be disrespectful and then being disrespectful to me. I don't like that because I do the best that I can to honor people within their, um, within meeting them, you know. So that's something I can't stand and that's why I'm big on self-respect. That's why I get on here and I say... Um, stuff like, and, and you, <laughs> you get in God's word, okay, to back it up, okay, don't throw your pearls to swine, and so that's the good thing about getting a relationship with God, you learn, um, some things that the world don't teach you, or that tradition may not teach you, okay, and some traditions, I believe, you hold on to them, and then there's others where you just have to like, okay, let me get some deeper understanding, and that's why you go to God and you learn more about his word on your own instead of waiting for the pastor, the minister, whoever, to just give you everything that you need. Because 
if you can read, <laughs> that's a blessing. Okay. So that means we can go to, we ain't got no excuses to not go to this word and try to figure some things out. Okay. With God's help. All right. So again, when it comes to, um, throwing your pearls to the swine, it also means to stop explaining yourselves to others. Okay. Stop, you know, always going over and beyond when you don't have to. Okay. Stop trying to prove yourself to people that don't see you. They see you, but they don't see you. You don't need to be investing in that. And recently I came across something like that. And I realized because my heart was into doing something for somebody. My heart was really there. And a lot of times when I do stuff for people, if I know what I'm doing and if I know I can be good at it, I'm going to put my heart into it. But what discourages me and what hurts me is when I go over and beyond, it's like I could go to the moon and back and somebody is just like, I don't want it or it ain't good enough or whatever. So I was dealing with some type of um issue like that. And I got to the point where I was like, you know what? The person's already showed me what it was. So I'm going to take what, what it is. And then moving forward, I will never do that to myself again with those individuals. I will never try to go to the moon and back and and go over and beyond and when you real and the thing is there's nothing wrong with trying to do that but when you realize what you're dealing with don't fault yourself because you don't know until you get a response but when you know let it go invest that energy into something else invest that energy into your purpose invest that energy to helping someone that's going to appreciate it okay um so I want to go back to don't give holy things to dogs, okay? And that's a part of the um, scripture where we're not to give holy things to dogs. That's a part of um, Matthew 7 and 6. So even yourself, your very being, we got to be careful. All right, one of the things I find myself feeling like is like I know now. I won't, I don't want to hang with certain people. At one point in time, I used to feel like I could hang with anybody, but now I done got to the point. It's certain people. They come in my space. I don't want nothing to do with them. And it's not because I think that I'm better than them, but when you grow in Christ, it's certain things you don't want to deal with no more. Like for me, let me give you an example. Okay. Like for me, if somebody approached me, and they show that they are interested in me in some way or form or whatever. For one, I don't like when somebody come at me and they automatically starts cussing. They automatically starts cussing, but they want to be friends. They want to get to know me and all this other stuff like that. And I'm just like, I don't want to have anything to do with you because I don't want to have to fight all that negativity out of my spirit and then have to convince you that I'm a child of God and show you all this other stuff. So it's certain people I won't hang out with because if I do hang out with certain folks and let's say they're not trying to get to know God, they're not trying to find the light of Christ, then it's going to be sort of like you giving something holy to God, which is of yourself. Now, it's nothing wrong with ministering to a person that needs um, uh, uh, some godly light into their lives, but that person got to want it. But a person that just comes to follow you around and they know you and, and them, they don't have nothing in common, but they want you to be involved with them. I don't roll like that no more. Okay. So it's certain people and certain crowds I will not hang around. And then... There's different levels to this too, y'all. There's, there's different levels, and I had to learn this sort of the hard way. I was um, dealing with a group of women some years ago, um, and the organization was supposed to have been a Christian organization. But what I realized too, just because an organization have Christian on the front, it does not mean that the values of Christ is being shared amongst that organization. What do I mean? You got people in the organization you believe that they're Christians, but they're doing things that are so worldly or they give you that worldly mentality. And sometimes if you vibe that off a person, 
that proclaims Christ, it could be that they're living a, um, a life that's different from what they're telling you. Okay. And so to me, that's sort of like the same as interacting um, with the world. And so you want to watch out for those as well. Okay. And that's why, and then me personally, I realized I didn't blend in with those people too well because of stuff like that. I was upset at one point, but then I realized I did not blend in with those people. So, um, when it comes to giving yourself to, to something that's, that's a dog, that that's the part I want to talk the most about in this moment earlier. I want to talk the most about the dog. Remember, um, it was a part in the Bible where Jesus was told a woman about, um, about giving the children's stuff to the dogs. And the woman was like, well, the, even the dogs eat the crumbs from the table. I thought about that like last night, y'all. And I thought about that. And I was, my thought was, what does the dog represent? What does the dog represent? And then you got to put it all in context, y'all. So the dog represents something that's unclean. Okay. The dog, um, it represents something that's unclean. That's why you don't give things that are holy to the dogs. And let me show you where it really hit with this understanding. In Revelations, um, don't remember what verse, but it's in chapter 22. In Revelations, when you're, you're reading about where the dogs and the sorcerers and everybody else is um, in the um, lake of fire, you know, and things like that. Or outside of God's gates. In that part of Revelations. That's where I realized. Okay. Dogs are, are something that's unclean. Okay. So when Jesus was talking about outside of these gates. I believe it was Jesus. Or I knew I was reading y'all. So don't, don't stall me. Okay. But I know in that part it says dogs. And dogs represent things that are unclean. So. There's nothing wrong with having a conversation with somebody that may need to receive Christ. But when you realize they on that foolishness, you better be careful so you don't start throwing your pearls to swine. You don't start trying to talk to somebody and they're just draining you. They're just wasting your time. Okay. So don't give yourself, um, don't give your energy to, again, a person who you know is not saved and they're not trying to listen and not trying to learn and not trying to receive. Um, a person that believes they're a Christian, they may not actually be saved, but they think because they heard Jesus and they didn't actually repent, they didn't actually um, confess their sins and all that stuff. They might just think because they went to church one time, they're a Christian. Okay. And so you see how they live. So... To them, they think they're Christian, but they live like a devil. And this, these are, and those are the type of folks I call a label Christian. They don't actually know that they need to repent and all the, the other things that come along with it. Okay. Um, those that are hypocritical, you know, those that you just really can't tell if they're saved or not, lukewarm. Don't give your energy and your valuables to them. You can correct with the, the um speaking the truth in love, and that'll be um that'll be sufficient, okay? Because at, at the end of the day, we can't make anybody receive our testimonies, okay? Sometimes when and and the the way you know that you need to not throw your pearls to swine, if you ever realize you talk to somebody and you get irritated with them because you see something spiritual. That's one sure sign you need to, to stop that conversation. If they're not getting it, leave it alone for you get frustrated. Okay. I know last year I was talking to someone and I was just seeing things in a certain environment that was not right. And I'm able to see certain things because of the discernment that God has given me. And it doesn't mean that I'm better than anybody or nothing. That just means this is what I see. This is what I see. This is what I know. But when you try to explain that to a person that have not been walking in Christ as long as you have or have no spiritual understanding, then they're going to be their response is going to be you just seeing stuff. It's really not like that, but they don't see. So, again, that's why you don't want to throw your pearls to swine. 
if you feel like this person is somebody that's on assignment, well, that you're on assignment for, just pray concerning this person. Pray that this person get wisdom and understanding and all that stuff. If the person is just um, playing out outlandish in their personality, you're just going to have to let the unjust be unjust and let the filthy be filthy based on Revelations 22 and 11. And again, as I've said at the begin the beginning of this message, um, look forward to me dropping a flyer to encourage all of us to pray on a common cause. Well, um, yeah, a common cause really just for conversion um, in this nation. Because again, I don't want to be part of the problem. I don't want to be the Christian that always condemns and stuff like that. And the one that's always calls stuff out, but we don't pray. I don't want to be the one that we don't pray about that stuff, right? So I don't want to be the one that's like, well, I see the spirit on somebody, but I'm not praying that that spirit come off somebody. That's what I mean. Okay. So I don't want to be the one that's calling stuff out, but then I don't pray about it. All right. And I want to encourage us not to be the same way. So y'all, that is all I have for um, today's Royal Empowerment. I will catch y'all later. And again, Look forward to a flyer coming out uh, within the next week.